How you doing? I'm Matt with 731woodworks.com. Today, we're gonna build this sofa table, TV stand, entryway table, hallway table, foyer table. We're gonna build this TV stand for a 65 inch TV. We're gonna build this table that can be used for tons and tons of different things. I'll leave it up to you to decide what you're gonna use this table for. This is a great little project, 30 inches high, 50 inches long, and 20 inches deep. So really all you need to build this project is a saw, a drill, a pocket hole jig and a sander. If you have those items, you can build this. Now, what will make your life easier is if you have a miter saw and a table saw. But if you don't have those, don't worry, you can still build this. It'll just be a little more challenging on you, mainly just to get these cut square is gonna be your main challenge. And also the angles back here on the X, but this X doesn't have to be there. You can totally leave that out. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is cut the legs out. This. Uh, Sofa table is going to be 30 inches tall. So I want my legs to be 28 and a half inches tall because the top is an inch and a half thick. So that gives us 30 inch total height. What I'm going to do is I just got some number one grade uh, two by fours. This is yellow pine. You can use uh, whatever you want. I would not use the stud material. They're kind of, they're usually a little worse off. I'm going to have to cut around some knots, but I'm going to make four legs at 28 and a half inches long. And then we're going to cut our top out. I always like to take the end it's usually pretty rough. I'll go ahead and trim that off. And what that does is it, it cleans it up, but it also gives me something square to start with. All I did was cut that knot out. I don't want that bad piece. The easiest way to get four equal pieces is to let, go ahead and line them up right here. If you have your miter saw, I like to flush this end up, make sure it's nice and flush, and then I'll just Move it until the blade just touches. Make sure that's flush and you can move it out of the way. That's gonna give you an equal cut. I'll do that three more times. Four legs. So I got my four legs cut out. When you buy construction grade lumber, it has a rounded over edge uh, from the factory. If you wanna keep that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. When you join them, just know that there's gonna be that little gap that shows there. Still nothing wrong with that. However, I'm gonna go ahead and take the edge off of these and also want to make sure that they're perfectly square and the way I do that is I joint with my table saw. If you have seen those videos, uh, I've got a video specifically about how to joint with a table saw using a straight edge which is this Stanley four foot level. What you do is, is you need something straight to uh, reference off of so that this edge is, is straight. So we're referencing off this edge Lay it up against that two or four. The key to is move the straight edge with your stock. If you don't, you might as well just use your fence if you're just gonna slide this and not move your straight edge. Or if you do move your straight edge. So what I'm just doing is move it right over to the edge, right to the edge it gets taken off. And then I will run this through, do all four boards that way. Once that's done, I'll flip it over until the cut side is against the fence. And I'll move the fence side in until it just takes the edge off. And we'll do all four that way and we'll get, we'll get them all squared up. All right, again, I've got that side flat. This side's still the factory edge. I just laid on my fence. Move it over until it takes off. So basically the blade width is what I'm taking off. It's gonna wind up making these boards three and a quarter inches wide. So I've basically taken a quarter inch off of the board. If I know I want my table 50 inches, the top 50 inches, and I want a little overhang on each end, let's say three inch overhang. This is the best way, easiest way I know to do it. So you just line these boards up, pretend that the table is upside down at this point. This is your leg, it's bottom leg, top of the leg. Measure in three inches, lay your tape measure there, put this leg at three inches, put this one at 47, and then we'll take that off and measure from there to there to give me 37 and 3 8 is what this runner will be. Now, I want two by two runners around the top or stretchers, rails, whatever you want to call them, all around the top, and then a two by two on the bottom for the bottom shelf. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to cut those out of this uh, extra two before that I have. And so I know I'm going to need three of, or two of them, 37 and 3 eighths. Time for 
for assembly of the frame anyway. So the tabletop is pretty simple. It's just pocket oak structure, which is what this is. And a lot of people don't like pocket oak. Uh, a lot of people uh, disagree with using pocket holes. Uh, they don't like it, but I do. And I build a ton of stuff out of pocket holes. And I've got personal furniture in my house that I built with pocket holes. And it's, it's holding up very well. So I don't have any problem with them. Are they heirloom pieces? Probably not. But will they work? Absolutely. And they look good. What we're going to do is go ahead and assemble everything. You need a nice flat area to assemble this stuff on. If you don't have that, find it. Because if you don't have a flat area, what will wind up happening is one of these legs will be lower than the other. And when you turn it over, you're going to have a big wobble. And nobody wants to wobble wobble. So what I like to do is uh, just get everything set up. I'm going to take a little bit of glue in each one of these joints. I'm using two and a half inch pocket hole screws when I drill this away. But when I drill this away into this, I like to use two inch screws just because I don't want it to bust through this side. And sometimes it tends to do that if you overdrive it, especially with this soft wood. With the glue and the two inch screws, plenty to hold it. The basic way the frame goes is just like this. Uh, these pieces I cut 14 inches. I don't know if I mentioned that. These are 14 inches. My table's just a little, my top's a little bit over 20 inches. So I cut these 14. We'll set all this up. I'll get everything clamped. We'll put the screws in it. And then what I'll do on the bottom shelf, we'll just take a tape measure. It just depends on how far. I'm thinking I'm gonna put that shelf in there at about eight inches. I'll put a link to the tools and supplies I'm using in this build so you'll be able to just go down to the description and you can check those out as you want. This is a combination square. I believe it's a Swanson. So you can just move this to eight inches, make a mark, make a mark. And so what I'll do is I'll take that and use that eight inch mark as a guide. Now we're gonna assemble. One more thing I wanna mention. When you put this together, it's important that these two pieces are flush. When this is, if anything gets off here and this raises or this raises or whichever way you'll get that wobble again so try to keep that as flat as possible if it's just a little bit off don't worry about that too much but if it is if it is off a lot then you it's going to cause you some issues so keep that in mind again that's why you got a flat space to work on uh, just try to keep everything nice and snug while you put it together you don't have to go crazy with glue, just enough to stick. If you get a bunch of this and you're staining, you gotta have to clean it back up because it'll wind up uh, discoloring your stain wherever the glue's at if you don't get it sanded off. So keep that in mind. If you get a, uh, an excessive amount of squeeze out. This base clamp is good for this kind of thing because it's gonna hold this in place. You can reach under there and feel if it's flush. It's actually not flush right here. Just, I mean, now I'm talking about maybe a 30 second it moved a little bit, <sighs> but I'm not concerned about that. Do the same thing on this end. We'll just keep doing that all the way around until I get ready to put the bottom shelf on. On these pieces, we want to make sure it's flush with the outside edge as well as that side too. So keep that in mind. So what I'll likely do is I'll go ahead and take some wood glue and put on the end of each one of these. Just take the clamp and <clears throat> get everything nice and snug. This is just an Irwin 36 inch clamp. These are like $15 or so. I'll put a link below. They're really nice clamps. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this bottom piece on. There's an X that's gonna go in the back. So I want to make sure that I have enough room that it'll actually look okay. So I don't want this way down here and there'd be like a tiny egg. I think, I think I'm gonna set my accommodation square at five inches. I did put one piece in the middle here that's to attach the tabletop. I'm gonna get ready to put my tabletop fasteners on. That's a step later. That's good for it. Set my combination square at five inches. So I'm just gonna hold it to the bottom. If it needs to move, I'll just take my little mallet. Make sure this stays square and that it, it's barely touching right there. This face clamp will hold it flush on each side, so that's not something I have to be concerned with. One thing you can do is you can actually just hold it at five inches and mark it so that you know about where it's gonna go. And that's the bottom that's going to the five inch mark. All right, 
so we got a basic frame together. This is just a one by six. And now I'm gonna put that X in the back, I hope. So what I've done is I've measured over two and three quarters of an inch, which is the center of this board on both ends. And I'm gonna put that center line right in the corner on each side. I'm gonna clamp it, then I'm gonna mark it so that I can cut my angles. No, you're not trying to decipher what angle you're using. A couple of these quick clamps are perfect for this. I've decided I'm gonna use this as the back. We want this to inset. So the best way, well, my way, oh, the best way, it's gonna take this little quick clamp, and just barely squeeze it on there, do the same thing on this side. So there's my mark. And I've, I'm pointing it right at the center. I don't know if this is the right way, but it's the way I'm doing it. So once that's done, I'm looking for a pencil. Always looking for a pencil. So once that's done, we'll just take our pencil. That should be our cut. We'll cut that out. It should fit right in there. We're gonna try it anyway. See what happens. It worked, so I'm halfway there. Now it's time to do the other. So I gotta cut out, <clears throat> you got those angles. Just mark them, it's very simple, just hold it up there and mark it. What you saw me do is hold this one up there behind this one mark my angles and then i marked these cuts but i also made a mark back here on this one so that i would know uh, where these pieces go once they're reinstalled and how we're going to attach these pocket holes i'm just going to take some inch and a quarter pocket hole screws i'm going to put one here one here uh, in each corner and then two on each one of those where they join up that's going to hold it perfect Got that X installed. Not a lot to that. That was easier than I thought it was going to be. If you hold those things up to the back and mark them, get them clamped down with those quick clamps and then mark it, makes it a lot easier. Then you just trim it to the marks to your table saw. Uh, I like to sneak up on those cuts, so a lot of times I'll cut it just a little bit long and then trim that as necessary, just tiny bits at a time. Got some pretty tight fits there, so everything's nice and tight. Not only does that add a little extra something than just a square table adds a little character to it a little eye-catching piece to it not only does it do that but it also helps shore that thing up because now you've got an x brace in there and it's going to prevent it from rocking i don't think that it would have anyway with these on the bottom anyway but uh, that just gives us some extra support this thing's gonna be solid as a rock next thing i'm going to do is put some shelving in here well some more one by six uh, i may leave some gaps in there I have not decided yet. Uh, just kind of winging this as I go. Once this shelf is built, we'll be ready to sand and stain. All right, so now it is time to put the shelf in on the bottom. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use one by six to do that. Uh, one by six appearance grade or paint grade. It's a spruce uh, material or spruce wood. Uh, it's real soft and it'll it's easy to work with. So we're gonna put that in there. And I'm just gonna run them lengthwise here. So I'm gonna probably use three. I may have to trim them down. I haven't measured that yet. So I'm going to use that and, and lay those in there. And I'm just going to pocket hole those in. So I'm going to pocket hole them into the end with the inch and a quarter pocket hole screws and also on the sides. And if I need, if I feel like I need a brace under the middle, I will put that in after the uh, shelf is in. Here's a tip. I use the DeWalt. Pro 
mobile app. Use the calculator to calculate. So I got a 14 inch span from there to there. I've got three boards. So with the app, you could just do 14 inches divided by three equals four and 11 sixteenths inch. So each board I'm gonna cut four and 11 sixteenths of an inch, uh, rip them down. I'm gonna joint them first on one side with the table saw so that I get a nice square edge. And then I'm gonna take them down to four and 11 sixteenths inch each. And then I will attach them in here. Uh, the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna pocket hole. So this is number one board, going to the front. Put a couple pocket holes here, maybe three or one, yeah, three down the front. Maybe a couple in the middle to tie to the second board. Uh, the second board also have a couple here to go to the third board, and then the third board the same way around the back pocket holes. Uh, just an inch and uh, three inch and a quarter pocket hole screws put in there. That's gonna hold everything nice and tight. Uh, I will check and see if it needs a brace. I'm thinking it probably won't with uh, those pocket holes in there. So rip them down. Let's get started. So just a quick rundown on how these uh, tabletop fasteners work. So what'll happen is I'll cut a slot here. I'll take this edge guide and set how far down I want it to go. And then this bit, how deep I want it to go. Just like that. I'll just set this up here and then adjust the, everything like I want it. But uh, what happens is you cut a slot in your piece of uh, material that's close to, that's on the top. And then this will slide into that slot and then a screw goes from the underside up through uh, the tabletop fastener into the table and it holds or to the top it holds the top in like that so that uh, wood expansion can come this way or this way they work pretty well uh, they're very inexpensive again there's links in the description below now it's time to build the top and i'm just going to build it out of common two by sixes and we want the top 50 inches, but I'm going to cut it about 50 and a half, 51, probably 51 inches. That way I can, once it's all assembled, I can just take a circular saw or even bring it over to the miter saw maybe if it's not too wide and cut the end off so that the end is nice and square. They all match. That's the easiest way to do it. If you cut them all 50, uh, ultimately when you put them all together, it seems like there's always one that's just sticking out a little bit too much. It's just an easier way to do it. Make sure everything's nice and flush. So I'm just gonna flush this end up. I'm gonna cut four of them at 50 inches. I'm gonna do the same thing with my two by sixes that I did with my two by fours. I'm gonna joint the edge of them with this straight edge in my saw so that everything gets nice and straight. So when I put my tabletop together, everything should match really, really nice, have nice tight joints. Uh, sometimes it works better than others, but it, it keeps it a lot better than if we just tried to go factory edge to factory edge. So when we go get ready to join this tabletop up, if you put factory edge to factory edge, you may have uh, one board that's a little warped, maybe one board that uh, is twisted or whatever, and this kind of helps with that.
All right, we're gonna stain this whole thing in the ebony. This is what the customer wants. Now we're going with the Rust-Oleum ebony uh, stain. The first thing I'm gonna do though is put this uh, Minwax pre-stain conditioner on there. If you've watched any of my videos where I've stained anything at all, you know I'm a believer in that stuff. It just takes, it keeps it from having a uh, blotchiness or a dark, uh, a lot of times a black will pop through, uh, real dark blotchy spots that will pop through. Uh, kind of like it shows here on the can, that, that unconditioned versus conditioned. And you'll see that especially in the spruce, uh, which is what this one by material is, but it'll also show up in that yellow pine. So keep that in mind. I highly recommend using that. And that's what I'm gonna do. I just wipe this down fairly liberally. I don't want it pulled up, but I do want it to coat the surface. I'm only gonna put the pre-stain conditioner on the top surfaces, uh, and then I'll stain everything underneath and all. Let that pre-stain conditioner dry at least 30 minutes, no longer than 45 minutes to an hour before you put your stain on. I'm gonna take the top off, stain it separately because it makes it easier. And uh, so far, man, this thing's looking good. Let's do it. So that's going to dry for about 30 minutes and while that's drying i'm going to talk to you about uh perfection i'm not a i, I would love to be perfect to, to i would love to create perfection but i'm an imperfect being so it's going to happen that i'm not going to be perfect just so if you're building this at home and you're just fretting over uh, gaps and things like that let me show you uh, this is my bottom shelf you can see it's tight in the middle it gets a little looser down here there's a little bit of gap there uh, same thing, little gap there. Same thing on this end, there's a tiny bit of gap. Uh, they're pretty flush. There is a little lip here. They're talking uh, 30 seconds of an inch. I mean, very minor. Wouldn't worry too much about that as long as you don't have one pop way up over the other. Uh, but little things like that is gonna happen. Don't let that fret. When we stain this, that ebony color, uh, you probably won't even see that gap. And if you do, it's gonna be very minimal. So don't, uh, don't be too hard on yourself, I guess is what I'm saying. Main thing is, you get these joints, or these cuts square here. If you get those square, and when you put this together, if you get all of this flush, then your furniture will set uh, level and flush. If you don't, if this is off, or it throws it off any, or if these aren't flush, what you'll get is a little bit of a wobble. And uh, so if you wanna fix that wobble, what you have to do is just find which leg is causing it. Usually it's one leg. Uh, and then you can just take, I usually just take a sander and sand that down, uh, that leg. Say if it was this one, I would flip it over and sand that a little while and then set it back up on a flat surface and make sure I don't have that wobble. And uh, that usually fixes it. If it's minor, if it's major, you know, if you got a gap this big, you got issues. And, uh, and you probably need to uh, maybe shorten a leg or two or three or four. Anyway, so we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna put that stain on there. So I've let that stain dry overnight. I know it says dries in one hour, but it don't. So I let that dry overnight. Now it's time to put that clear coat on. I'm gonna put three coats of this Verathane, a water-based polyurethane. I like this because it doesn't leave brush strokes or anything like that. Put a nice thin coat on and it dries very quickly. Uh, normally it's really cold here today. It's like 26 degrees out. You got that shop heater on. So I'm gonna put three coats on, then we'll install our tabletop and uh, yeah, it'll be done after that. So it's coming along nice. I think it's looking good. I like the way that ebony stain turned out. Uh, you can see nice wood grain popping through that ebony. It looks really good. And uh, this is this uh, water-based clear coat's gonna put a nice uh, satin finish on this thing. It's gonna look really, really nice. Let's do it.
So this is about the easiest way to put that top on. Just flip this thing upside down, get it on your table or your flat surface. I put this old sheet down just to keep anything from scuffing it on the tabletop. I'm just gonna measure it three inches from this end. Perfect. Well, look, three inches from this end. And then I believe it was an inch and a half overhang on each side. We'll just install those tabletop fasteners and uh, be done with our project. So we're gonna put this tabletop on with these tabletop fasteners. Uh, these are very simple to use. You see they're just, some people call them Z clips or tabletop fasteners. So you just put the solid end into the slotted hole. It doesn't matter where, as long as it can move in there. I always pre-drill my holes. I don't want those to uh, split. It doesn't take a lot. Just drill the little pilot hole. Then take your uh, Phillips bit with the included screws. They come with these black uh, included screws. There you are. They don't have to be super tight. We're just snugging that up. And uh, I'm going to do all the rest of them the same way. And then we'll be ready to turn it over. Finished product turned out nice. I like it. The ebony stain on that pine and spruce with that satin clear coat, it looks good. What I didn't discuss was I used a quarter or a quarter inch chamfer bit on my, my handheld router to put a chamfer all the way around the top and bottom of the top on the bottom side. It gives it a nice little detail, a little something extra. I also did that on the bottom of the legs uh, just so that it's always a good idea to either use a roundover bit or a chamfer bit on the bottom of your legs to prevent splintering. If you don't have those, just take your sander and just round that over a little bit just to keep that from splintering and, and stuff like that. Definitely drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about this build. If you're gonna be attempting this, I would love to know about it. If you do, post a picture on your social media and tag at 731 Woodworks in that and let me know because I like to check those out. Don't forget to check the description down below. Links to the supplies and the tools that I use in this build are down there for you to use. Hey, check out this playlist right here if you want more pocket hole projects. You can build your own furniture using simple joinery works great i built tons of stuff like that also check these cards down below the video here you'll see uh, t-shirts and things like that if you buy one of those it helps support this channel i really appreciate it give you a virtual fist bump for that